My husband had terminal cancer. He had four or five weeks to live. He jumped. That's what he did. Oh, I live here. I'll look after him, won't I? I manage the restaurant, so maybe he sends the food. Come on, don't want to kill you, mate. Yeah, I will. Mr. Ignatowski, can I say how much I enjoy your cooking? It's Jim. He said the deceased had cancer. Well, the mother, the two daughters. What, he had four or five weeks to live? No, it's a homicide. Mr. Weaver, yours and Mr. Levetche's problem with a race rigging inquiry? Oh, all right, look. We had a first starter from New Zealand, right? Uh, he cost us a packet, monkeys jumped from trees to back him, and he ran second last. Oh, I will. What happened? I mean, wh what did you do? I didn't do anything. Marco, what? Narcolepsy. The police vet says it just makes them fall asleep instantly, anywhere, anytime. Well, I want you both to go back to the beginning, and I want you to find the murderer. What is going on there? Mamma mia. I mean, you wouldn't want to be any other kind of cop, would you? Well, you'd be mad if you did, wouldn't you? In a highway patrol car, stinking of last night's pizzas. Yeah, walking and beating, having drunks spew in your pockets. <laughs> this guy's peddling it. Some incredibly flash driving there, sir. Cheers, yeah, it was, wasn't it? Made a couple of mistakes, but you know, couldn't have seen it. Can you please step on board here with me, sir? Oh, oh, oh. Um, sorry, I don't think I can stand up. Give him a hand up, man. Come on, sir. Why'd you let him drive? It's his boat. Oh. I won't let anyone else drive it. Oh. Why didn't you stop him? Just sit down. He won't let anyone stop him driving it either. It's the last time you had an alcoholic drink, sir? Uh, half an hour? Oh, 45, 50, 55. Well, according to the provisions of the Traffic Act, I require you to take a breath test for the purposes of indicating the con. Houston, it appears that I am up to shit. <laughs> My record's point too. How have I gone? Yeah, pretty ordinary. So you're under arrest for the purposes of a breath analysis? Breath analysis, yeah. You know, you're as bad as a highway patrol. You're everywhere. Oh, no, we're a lot worse than the highway patrol, mate. We love what we do. Helen, any word about the horse from the Licensing Enforcement Agency? Oh, look, not yet. They've got a lot to wade through, Mick. I'll let you know. OK. We'll be at the Levetch's house establishing the family's whereabouts. Yep, good luck. Yeah. Oh, oh, please. Talk about blue. Don't you people know there are other colours? Whoa. Like maroon or something. Come on, huh? Huh? It's enough. You're fine, Mr. Harris. Mr. Harris. Sit, that'll be fine. Thanks. That doesn't dissolve your plastic, nothing will. <laughs> Luke, Luke, it's not funny. No, my love, you're right, you're right. Your test indicates a blood alcohol content of 0.13 milligrams, Mr. Yeah, Harris. I'm telling you, from inside here, it feels like 0.2. Have you checked your machine? 0.13. Right, we'll do us fine. Thanks, Mr. Harris. It was 
Katerina, you want to go after her? Oh, uh, no. Not what she got that dog with her. Doing the odd job for the grieving widow. So incredibly thoughtful, isn't it? Mm -hmm. Oh, you two again, eh? What can I do for you? Where was Katerina going with the dog? Oh, I convinced her to put it in a boarding kennel, you know, until we can work out what to do with it. Seems easiest all round. Katerina, she's seeing that young chef, uh, Jim Ignatowski, isn't she? Oh, yeah, they've been on together about 18 months. Did her father know about that? Oh, God, no, there'd be blood on the terracotta. And you didn't tell him, did you, Bobby? Well, you know, I thought about it for a bit there, but then poor old Cosmo, he got cancer, and I thought that was a trauma he could do without. Dumping Katerina in it doesn't really bother you too much, does it? Oh, you know, pet, my loyalty is to a poor old dad. <laughs> Will you keep up the good work, Bobby? We do what we can. Have a nice day, Nick. Vincenzo and I are working on the new season's menu. I'm sure you can come back. This won't take a minute. We just want to establish everyone's whereabouts at the time of your husband's murder. I'm OK, Mrs. Lovetsch. Uh, you go, it's OK. Sorry. This wine is absolutely wrong. OK, so just tell me, you are absolutely positive Katerina wasn't with you in the restaurant at the time of her father's death? Certainly. She swears she was. Oh. No. Oh. She didn't ask you to say she was? She didn't ask you to lie for her? Scusi. It's OK, Mr Bellini. I think she did ask you to lie for her, but for some reason, you've changed your mind. <laughs> non capisco, non capisce. So you must think that I killed my husband, or one of my daughters killed their own father. It's procedure, Mrs Levice. It's outrageous. We've done nothing. We refuse. We're not going away, I'm sorry. All right, let's go through this again. Maria was at work. No, if you don't mind, we'll ask Maria where she was. Maria! They want to know where we were when your father died! Thank you. Or you'd have a job book. You know, something that would prove you were out in a water taxi with a customer at the time of your father's death. You don't believe me. All right. What about a receipt book? Do you write receipts? Forget that crap. You don't believe me. Well, what sort of what sort of taxi service are you running, Maria? What you think you've got daddy's little girl? She doesn't need to worry about the money side do you of things. I push my little daddy over here, do you? I don't know, did you? Then why aren't you shit scared that I'm not gonna push you over now? Because I can't imagine what you'd achieve. Get you out of my face. Yeah, I'll get out of your face when you tell me the truth. You can get out of my face. Maria gets emotional. Yeah, we all do under certain circumstances. What did you say, uh, this lady's name? How do you spell it? N-A-T-O-L-I. She makes the pasta for the restaurant. I told you this before. I told you I had a meeting with yeah, her. No, I'm aware of that, Mrs. Louis J. All right, I just had to confirm it. I need a name and an address. And that'll be it, huh? You leave us in peace. To grieve. To make funeral arrangements. To cope. How's everything going here then? All right? What do you think? This idiot keeps asking me questions. Maria's up there with that other idiot. You know what amazes me, Alex? Is everywhere you turn, there's Bobby Weaver. I mean, does he live here or something? Because if he does, you'll be charging him rent. Yeah, well, Maria did say he was on with Antonella. Just like she said uh, Katarina was on with Jim. You know, it's all going on in this family, isn't Maybe it? she's not so crazy. Yeah. Want to drop? Yeah, I'll drop. Mr. Ignatowski, so glad you're home. You're here for your private cooking lesson, huh? Come in. Uh, no, not right now, thanks. You? You can't even cook toast. Yeah, you're probably right. Can't even boil water. But then again, I'm not a murder suspect. Oh, come on. Not this again. Ongoing, Mr. Ignatowski. Now, you said you were at the produce markets the time Mr. Luvece died. Is that correct? Why? Well, we're going to check on some names, people you spoke to, people that saw you. You have to check that out. Well, that's the general idea. You got a problem with that? I think he's got a problem with that. I think else. he has. You weren't at the produce markets? No. Where were you? <laughs> You're not going to believe this. Try me. I was with someone. You're not going to believe it's someone I was with. Oh, let me guess. Uh, Katarina Luvice? How do you know that? Because <laughs> I'm not a chef. <laughs> yeah, you're, you're a mind reader. <laughs> Thanks, Jim. VKG, Sydney Water Police to police launch nemesis. Go ahead, VKG. Report of a collision between a speedboat and a tinny near the Dolphins. The Harpy is on its way. Please attend. Copy that, VKG. DGA, two minutes. Oh, OK, this doesn't look good. Oh, no. Well, he's got to have come straight from Bale, the SPC. 
Vic AG Sydney Water, please. This is the police launch nemesis. We have two male victims and one female. Request ambulance vehicles to evacuation area 4, Union Street Wharf. Over. She's solicitor just faxed me a copy of the will. We didn't know there was a son, did we? Yeah, well, the only son we know of died of leukaemia when he was two. The same one. I don't. Don't what? tell it. <laughs> so how old's this boy? Uh, Antonio Lavecci, he's 26, alive and well, and living in Lucca in Italy. Apparently, his father's been sending him money regularly over the past 19 years. Here's the address there, see? So he left his Australian family nothing. Well, in Cosimo's original will, everything was to be divided equally between the wife and the two daughters. But a year ago, all that changed. This boy gets everything. That'd put a nose or three out of joint, wouldn't it? You are a gem. Thank you very much, Helen. The old guy was probably fishing. Didn't know what hit him. Dead in the water. Got any ID? Oh, uh, Sykes is informing the family now. Quinn's taking the others to the hospital. All right. And the driver of the boat was the drunk they booked this morning. Yep. Hey, how'd it go? We do well. I got the son in to do the formal ID. And he reckons his old man hasn't been out fishing for months. So the family got together to help push him into it and help him out. <laughs> so what's happening here? Luke's been settled into intensive care. He's paralyzed from the chest yeah. down. That's if he lives. It's not looking good. Thanks. Hey, Margie, just take a seat over here, down. How's the show? I tried to stop. I told him. He said he's gonna die. Margie, not just now, but when you're up to it. We're gonna need a statement. But you just take your time, okay? Constable Quinn here will drive you into the police station. Fisherman's dead, isn't he? Would you care to take a seat, Mrs. Louverchow? No, thank you. I expect you won't be wasting very much of my time. Now, tell me what's so important. This is a personal matter, Mr. Weaver. Oh, Antonella and I don't have any secrets. It's private. Thank you, Mr. Weaver. Fair enough. You're the experts. You know where to get me, Antonella. Would you like to sit down, please, ma'am? No, thank you. OK. Were you aware that your husband has a son in Italy? No. His name's Antonio. He's 26 years old. I'm sorry. What can I say? Your husband's will leaves everything to his son. <gasps> I see. Yes. Of course, now, because i become used to the way you people think. You believe that I, or one of my daughters, killed my husband because we were to be left nothing. We're selfish, greedy, murdering people. Is that what you now believe? What if you didn't know about Antonio and the will? I didn't. And my daughters wouldn't know, and I ask you not to tell them. I'm sorry, Mrs. Luvice, we cannot make that promise. And why should they have to know such a thing? That their father did such a thing to them. You have to understand that this is part of the investigation in your husband's murder. I beg you, please. Please don't tell them, please, please. 
please don't. I'm, so, I'm sorry, please. Mrs. Levetchi. I'm sorry. I suppose you'll tell the whole world. You'll humiliate my daughters to the whole world. Uh, please. I'm very sorry, Mrs. Levetchi. Please. Please. <laughs> Hello. Hello. We tried the restaurant, but you weren't there, so we took a punt here. I see. Jim said he told you where I was when my father died. That's right. You were here. Vincenzo must have got confused when you asked him to lie for you. Said so his English is ordinary. Yeah, obviously. Can I speak to you privately? Uh, anything you want to say, you can say in front of Jim. Did you know your father had a son? Your half-brother, Antonio Luvice, 26 years old, and he lives in Italy. I don't believe it. I believe it. I told you he was a lying arsehole. Your father's will leaves everything to him, including the restaurant. And I'll tell you how big an arsehole he is! Oh, damn it! Oh, um... Uh, Katarina, I take it you didn't know about this? Of course I didn't know. How could I know? Maybe your father told you. He didn't. You know, the thing is, you both lied about your whereabouts when your father was killed, Katerina. So why should we start believing you now? <laughs> Could you just leave us alone? <laughs> just go away! A brother? Maria, are you OK? Everything? Does he get everything? Unfortunately, yes. Because Dad hated me? Because I was a daughter and he wanted a son to replace his dead son, but he already had a son anyway. So how much did he hate me? How much did the bastard really, really hate me? I told him to leave it. We could get it tomorrow. Luke insisted. I tried to stop him. He said he'd take it home. On his own. I tried to take the keys from him. But he just laughed. So I got into the speedboat with him. I thought everything was going to be fine. He said, I'll just open her up, give her a clean out. I asked him to slow down. We came around the point too fast and there was a tinny heading out. We were too close to the wharf to turn to the right. We hit the tinny. Okay. I'm gonna sign that as true and correct. Luke's gonna die. I know he's gonna die. Time. I want to go back to the hospital. I'll take you there. Last year, one of Cosimo and Bobby Weaver's horses died from a snake bite. They made an insurance claim. Now, Bobby Weaver already had the cause independently confirmed and the horse had been cremated. That's OK, it's standard procedure. However, the independent vet was none other than... Murray Slocum. Bobby Weaver's alibi. And this is where it gets interesting. I rang the insurance company and that is a copy of a claim made four days ago. Golden fart, broken leg. Two days ago, Bobby Weaver withdrew that claim. The day Mr Levetcher died. Why? Well, I don't know, but the insurance company got a call from Mr Levecci saying he wanted the claim withdrawn, that there'd been some kind of a mistake. <laughs> mistake? What? what? Is the horse dead or what? No, it's dead apparently, but no claim, no post-mortem. <clears throat> OK, so th this is significant because... I've got a fair idea. Yeah? In fact, I've got a bloody good idea. All right. Thanks, Helen. Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, good on you. Get 
G'day, Bobby. Oh, God, you too again. What can I do for you? You were stiffed with golden fire, weren't you? How's that? You know, it cost a fortune, broke a leg. Yeah, well, uh, racing, you know, that's how it goes. Yeah, well, that's what insurance is for. Why did you withdraw the claim, Mr Weaver? Technical reasons? You know, livestock insurance. <laughs> it's a legal minefield. Yeah, especially when the claim's fraudulent. So where's Golden Fire's carcass now? Oh, it's cremated. No, it wasn't. There are two crematoriums and none of them got a record of Golden Fire. This is a warrant to search your property. You know, Bobby, when I was a young fella, my mum and dad, they were really keen gardeners, you know? My mum, she was really proud of her herb garden. Anyway, one day, the neighbours at the back of us, they put up this dirty, great, rotten fence. All of a sudden, her herbs end up in the shade, they die. Which is why I couldn't figure out a man of your intelligence would stick his veggie garden under the shade of a tree this size. I mean, nothing's going to grow, is it? Unless you're a magician, you're certainly not that. Whoa, what do we have here? Is that good old golden far? Our vet says the horse's leg injury is consistent with blows from a metal bar. Nah, no, mate, I wouldn't think so. No, his opinion's good enough for us, Mr Weaver. So if you didn't do it, then maybe your close vet mate Murray Slocum did. You both paid a fortune for a dud horse, so you thought you'd get your money back with an fraudulent insurance claim. No, look, look, we're all busy people, OK? Now, racing's business. Now, you, you buy a bit of machinery, right? And it doesn't work. What do you do? You get your money back. It's that simple. What? Fraudulently? Well, getting dudded in business is a risk you take. I got caught tough. You know, there are millions of people starving. I had a massive breakfast, you know? So? Well, what do we do now? All the paperwork? Not only will you be charged with fraud, you will be charged with aggravated cruelty to animals. That's great. Can I get out of here then? You know, I've got a business to run. I've got three kittens to spade tonight. Well, why don't you get your mate mother to spate them for you? The insurance company called you, didn't they? And they told you that the co-owner, the late Cosimo Luvice, he wanted to drop the settlement. Yeah, and that was the day before he was murdered. You know, I think he found out about your creative business dealings. You know, at this juncture in time, I might just choose to say bugger all more. Mm, it's your prerogative. How's this, Mr Weaver? You killed Cosimo Luvice because he sprung you. And the only connection was his copy of the claim, which is what you were looking for when we found you. And the only person who can vouch for your whereabouts is a co-conspirator in this fraud. Well, let me just say this. Prove it. Anyone survived? Yeah. See, si. quando? Do it, do it, Messi. See, si. momento por favor. Hey, you gotta, just gotta get over to Margie Goodwin's as soon as. Le Sadove in Australia esattamente è andato Antonio? Hey. È andato attraverso il padre. Is this Margie's possession? Yeah, it's just a bag. The crime scene's been through it and the boat as well, so... Is reporting? No, not yet. Drop this off. Hey. Thought you might want these back. He told me on the way in that he's doing really well. He's gonna live. That's good. It's crippled. I'll never walk again. It doesn't have to be the end of the world. It doesn't. He'll be charged with manslaughter, won't he? That's up to the coroner. I'm a lawyer. Just graduated, but I have studied these things. Possibly manslaughter, yes. Well, they said it may have some brain damage. You may not remember anything at all. Just have to wait and see what happens. Why didn't I try harder to stop him? Motive, yes, but we can't prove Bobby Weaver killed Cosimo. We just can't. Where's this going? Where's all this heading? Can I interrupt? 
Yeah, what is it, Janewski? Um, I just spoke to a male person on the phone. I think it was this Antonio's flatmate. Oh, yeah, the son in Italy. Yeah, anyway, he said he's here in Australia. Antonio is. You're joking. No, I wouldn't. He said he came here two months ago to see his father. Two months? You sure about that? Due mercy. That's what he said, two months. Well, where's he been? I mean, why hasn't he shown up? Oh, I don't know. I'm sorry. Should I know? No, you shouldn't. That's really good. Thanks, Donna. So the father knew he was here. But the family didn't know, so where's the father keeping him? Two months. Hey, Vincenzo! Hey, buongiorno. Buongiorno. Can we drop the Italian, please? It'll be easier for us. Oh, not again. Caterina, we're not after you this time. Look, it's 10.30 and we have 90 lunches. You're obviously over your shock. Oh, I had a saying. Life must go on. Yeah, and it does, so go on. So you got any ID? You know, like uh, credit card, passport, maybe even a driver's license? Why? Oh, just to prove that you're Vincenzo Bellini. Not Antonio Luvece. So, have you got the ID or not? It's not a problem. My name is Antonio Luvece. Your father sacked Jimmy Gnutowski and brought a new chef out, fresh from Italy. Voila. Meet your half-brother and new owner of this restaurant. Tua madre è una puttana. So why the fake name? Why the lie? My padre could not tell his familia here about me. He said to me he, he wants to go back to Italia um, to die. I was uh, going to go with him. So the will's read and you get everything. You uh, see, um, it, it uh, was uh, not brave of my padre, but uh, he was dying. Huh? Also, when he died, I knew I would, uh, you say, uh, get everything, money. Uh, yeah, inheritance. Yes, yeah, see, in inheritance. Uh, I was uh, worried the policia would think I killed him for the inheritance. Uh, also, uh, another reason I said nothing. Okay. okay. Now, did you know your father's cancer? See, si. yeah, it disappeared. Oh, no, no, I, I no, no, don't true. believe this. True. No, true. Did oh. he tell you? No. Oh. Antonio, when was the last time you saw your father alive? At the restaurant the night before they killed him. So we know Katerina. She mm. was not there, right? No, no. No. So was anybody else there with you? No, no. What do you no, say? No, no. They. They. Uh, Katerina uh, and uh, Jimmy Gnatowski. Why do you think they killed your father? They hated my padre. They wanted the restaurant. The father changes his will to favour his son Antonio. The cancer disappears, so he changes his will back. Antonio gets a bit upset because he's going to lose everything. He says, sorry, Dad, biff. Right. Have you checked Antonio's story? I mean, was he travelling back to Italy with his father? Helen's just checking the travel agent right now. What about the daughters? Have they got motive? Have they got an alibi? Uh, Katerina thought that she and Jimmy Gnutowski would get the restaurant. They're both alibying each other. <laughs> Andy. And the other daughter, Maria, she thinks that she's going to inherit the money to save her business. Now, she said that she was working the day that her father was killed. I checked with a base operator. He said that she was logged off at the time. Whereabouts, totally unknown. You all right there, Chief? Yeah, yes, yeah, the shoulder thing. What about the mother, Mrs. L Mrs. L Mrs. What was her name? Oh, Mrs. Luverci. Luverci. Yep, her whereabouts checks out. She was with Mrs. Natoli, the parcel maker, at the time. Sorry, Antonio had a ticket booked back to Italy with his father. He still does. However... Cosimo's ticket was cancelled the morning of his death, before he died. Yeah, by whom? Caterina Laverci. Rang the travel agent, said her father wouldn't be needing the ticket. <laughs> it's unbelievable. <laughs> Fantastic. Right. The hell's going on there? He's doing two thirds of the family. Oh, he's good. He must be really good. <laughs> oh, my, oh, my Lord. <laughs> Jimmy, Jimmy, Jimmy boy, eh? So, Mr Ignatowski, how long have you been involved with Maria? 
about a month. Right? I mean, she's a nice girl. She's crazy, but she's nice. You know? Great sex. But she's crazy. She hates her father or something. She sees a shrink. She takes it out on me. You know? Lucky for her, I'm strong enough to take it. Katarina doesn't need to know about this, right? Uh, Mr. Ignatowski, what about when Mr. Lovecchia died? Where were you? That day that Cosimo was murdered. What a day, right? I'm with Maria. Maybe quarter past ten she goes. Right? I grab a shower, blanch some spinach, dash a lemon juice. That's great for energy. And maybe 20 to 11, Katarina arrives. <laughs> I mean, it's lucky for them I'm strong enough to take this. I thought Katerina was special. I thought Dad loved her. I didn't know why. She was a girl. He only wanted boys. But he didn't love her after all, did he? True to form. He betrayed her too. Where were you when your father was murdered, Maria? All oh, men are bastards. Men hate women. Their wives, their daughters. Men betray women. Their wives, their daughters. But that bastard left everything to the bastard son. Maria. Don't bastard men stick together. Maria, sit down, please. Can you tell us who killed your father? He deserved to die. And I'm glad that he's dead! Oh, and he rots in hell! Do you hear me? He rots in hell! In bloody hell! I mean, rot! I mean, rot in bloody hell! Don't touch me! Get away from me! Mama! Mama! He hated all of us. Carla, no, he didn't. Papa loved us. He loved us. But he had a bastard. I spoke to a psychiatrist. She says that she's subject to violent emotional outbursts. Yeah. There's something else we didn't know. She tried to attack her father a couple of times with anything that was lying around the place. But his son. Papa's mistake. He's not a real son. Not one of us. Not a love here, Papa's mistake. He really loved us. He loved us. I can take her home now. Yeah, of course. But we may need to... Of course you will. I understand that. Everything's all right. We're going home. Oh, Mrs. Liverchay, we'd like to speak to your daughter, Katerina, please. Alone, if you don't mind. You could wait downstairs. That'd be great. That's all right. I'm fine. Um, Mrs. Liverchay, do you want to follow me? Why did you change your father's ticket to Italy? I loved him. But I didn't always agree with everything he said, but... You, uh, I didn't want him to die in another country. He told the travel agent that he didn't need the ticket back to Italy anymore. What did you mean by that? Katerina, what did you mean by it? OK. Two things occur to me. Either you knew the cancer had disappeared and he didn't need to travel to Italy anymore to die, meaning he told you, or you already knew he was dead. Katerina. All right, yes, yes, he, he told me that he, he didn't have cancer anymore. Thank you. I hugged him. So this had to be after he'd seen a specialist, before he went home, right? Yeah, he, he had to drive past the restaurant on the way home and he, he called in. I hugged him and hugged him. 
I loved him. Despite everything. He didn't even tell you about Antonio, did he? Or the will. No, he didn't. I have something to ask you. Yeah. Why? Why is that man, Antonio, allowed to just to just walk into our restaurant like he owns it? I mean, he just changed the locks. What right does he have? Well, I assume your mother will be challenging the will, so... No. You just objected to Antonio assuming ownership of the restaurant. Mama said we won't be challenging the will. Why won't they challenge the will? I don't know, it beats me. But whatever Mama says goes. Yeah, but it's not just the restaurant. You know, it's the house, the lot. I mean, what's she, what's she just going to walk away from the whole thing? Take her daughters with her? I mean, where? Where? Is your regain conscious this year? I am. What do you think he'll say when he wakes up? I suppose you want to be there when he wakes up. Of course. I wouldn't mind being there myself. To hear you tell him he was driving the boat. See, he wouldn't remember much. Probably nothing, in fact. And you could convince him he was driving the boat and he'd never know any different because he loves you and he trusts you. What are you talking about? You were driving the boat, Margie. No, it's ridiculous. You swerved right to avoid the tinny and you hit the pylon. I threw you both over the left side of the boat. Luke went out of the boat and hit the tinny, which was on the left side. All bored down, Margie. If you were in the passenger seat, you'd be in there. Crippled. Luke would have wanted me to do this. He wouldn't have wanted me to mess my life up. Hey. Listen, the uh, forensics and crime scene reports just come through. Yeah? There's a few inconsistencies with Margie Goodwin's statement. It suggests that Margie was in the driver's seat at the time yeah? of the accident. Yeah? Thanks. Yeah, nice. Right. This is the last of Mr Lovecci's files. Honestly, I have never known anyone to keep such a detailed history of themselves. Unbelievable. Pride. That's all it is. How's that? Well, why... Why she won't contest her will. She's proud. She's proud of her kids, her family, the family name. She doesn't want this dragged through the courts. That's a bit extreme, though, isn't it? Oh, mate, you don't know how protected this woman is. I mean, the last thing she wants is to publicly admit that she and her daughters are disinherited. She won't need a court case to do that, Alex. This thing's a way of getting out. I mean, she's got to know that Jim Ignatowski won't keep his mouth shut. Surely she's got to know that. Well, then what is she protecting them from now? I mean, what is there to hide? Mick. Mick, who are you ringing? Just call it a long shot. We assumed Antonio was illegitimate. He is, of course he is. No, he's not. The son Cosimo's been sending money to is the son of a marriage in Italy. His first marriage. Which never ended. There was no annulment, no divorce. Did Cosimo confess to you that your marriage to him was bigamous? See, we can't find any reason why you won't challenge the will. I mean, sooner or later this is all going to come out, right? Yeah, and your daughters in the legal sense are illegitimate. Who'll find out about this? Uh, which part, exactly? That my husband shamed his family. Or maybe you mean the part about you murdering him. I'd say quite a few people. You see, that's a problem with murder. People find out. Yeah. And your alibi? Lied for you. No. Dear Mrs. Natoli, she never wears a watch. If I were a little late or a little early, she wouldn't know. So you were at home with your husband? All he could think about was not having cancer anymore. He told me God had smiled on him. He said he owed it to God to tell me the whole truth. And then you hit him. Mrs. Levece, did you hit him? He wasted my daughter's lives. What did they face but humiliation? It's the 21st century, Mrs. Lovetcher. I'm sure they'll cope. You're nothing without your pride. Nothing. 
Antonella Lovece, you are under arrest for the murder of Cosimo Lovece. You are not obliged to say or do anything unless you wish to do so. But whatever you say or do may be used in evidence. Do you understand that? You and your long shots. <laughs> I told you punting was more useful than farting around with food. Oh, food. I'm talking about food. I'm starving. You hungry? You want to get something to yeah, eat? Yeah, I am, actually. Oh, starving. I know this great little Italian joint. Does the most marvellous, marvellous. I do not think so. <laughs> I'm, I'm over-Italian. No, more Italian. Ever. OK?